be accepted to thee, O Lord of God, and our Redeemer. Amen. I was uh, visiting a family. Of course, the Christmas decorations are still there. And I saw uh, a lot of uh, Christmas uh, presents, uh, unopened uh, Christmas presents. So I asked uh, the lady, hey, you've got lots of uh, Christmas presents here. Well, she said, uh, in a collection uh, uh, that's been there for some years, every time when uh, someone uh, gives her or one of the family members uh, Christmas uh, present, they keep it under the Christmas tree. So I asked her, what happens if uh, one of the presents uh, contains some food stuff? Oh, she gets one. Christmas is a time of uh, giving and uh, receiving uh, presents. We, uh, as parents, we get busy walking uh, in the shopping mall, walking and walking and walking, trying to uh, get the right gift for our children. Pray we uh, celebrate the feast of our uh, eager friend. And uh, it plays a uh, cause for us to listen. We heard read how the young boys went from the east. They brought gifts to Jesus. Before we look at the gifts, let us uh, just, just refresh our knowledge of uh, the Bible. We sang the hymn, uh, We Three Kings. Of Oriental, a favorite uh, Christmas uh, hymn. We sing uh, during uh, services, we sing when our uh, book caroling, and then uh, during uh, the children's nativity play, then we have this uh, hymn uh, sung or they will sing. So much so, uh, we uh, believe uh, that. Uh, after the birth of Jesus, uh, three kings from the east came to visit Jesus. And uh, when they came to visit Jesus, Jesus was still in the manger. So that is the uh, climax of our negative declare. There we will see uh, Matthew and uh, Joseph the baby, and then we have some uh, sheep, and then uh, we'll see the uh, we'll see the uh, shepherds, and then the wise men, or according to the king, the king will walk in with the other presence. But when we uh, carefully uh, read uh, Matthew chapter two, it does not say three. Neither does Matthew say kings. Now, in Greek, uh, Matthew chapter 2, it says, uh, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Maggie, from the east came to Jerusalem, it does not mention that king. And uh, because some translation has it as a wise man. And ask where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? So the Bible better does not say how many men are king. There could have been a group of them. So uh, so this is a wise man, not kings. So we do not know uh, how many of them, but we assume a uh, tradition that uh, has it because uh, three gifts were presented to Jesus. So we assume that they were only three wise, uh, wise men, not necessary. So this uh, wise men, they follow the star. Very interesting that uh, as I was uh, reading this uh, passage, I asked myself, when was the last? A 
and look at the stars. Of course, now during this uh, rainy season, we will not be able to see any stars. But the stars are there. But even during uh, a clear, when the sky is clear, we hardly see, uh, we hardly take time to look up and admire the stars. Of course, when uh, during our kindergarten days, we are uh, seeing this uh, kindergarten song, and we Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I can't get you remember that. Uh, so, uh, in other days, we sing. Twinkle, twinkle. Then, after that, we, uh, then we forget about the stars. And of course, we, uh, we are more, we, we see the moon more often than the stars. Hey, today is a full moon. Eh? Today is a half moon. Eh? Hey, today is a little moon. I know we are more attracted to the moon than the stars. But this uh, wise man. Uh, they study the stars. And uh, during the time when Jesus was born, the, world, the people were already expecting the prophecy made about the birth of a Messiah to come to pass. 800 years ago, Prophet Mika had prophesied the birth of a Messiah. So this is not a wise word. when they were looking and studying the stars, they were expecting the birth of uh, the Messiah. So when they saw the star, a very special star, they realized the prophecy has come to pass. So they decided to uh, go and see the child. So they uh, came together and they got their gifts for the child and they took a long journey. We will not go into detail of uh, the visit to uh, the uh, heaven, but it's interesting it says, if you turn to uh, verse uh, 9 onwards, after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went at the end of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. So once again, uh, now during our nativity play, we we'll see the uh, star from the back. Of course, we try to be high. So we have the star and someone will pull the string and the star will just go. And then the voice, the, the, the king, the the song, the war, looking at the star. Of course, we see where the star stop. Where did the star stop, uh, Martin? <laughs> so we, uh, we, of course, we year after year, we see this uh, activity place, so we, uh, uh, we think the star stop over the manger where Jesus was. Martin, Mas? Okay. That's because under the pictures, uh, <laughs> it goes on that. Uh, on coming to the house, not to the manger. So after the birth of Jesus, Takana, they want to stay in the manger. And if you uh, put the uh, what look if you look at the whole passage, <coughs> Helen had given the uh, orders to have uh, babies below the age of two. So which means he must have had carefully calculated the father time that the baby was born. They want to make sure that every child below the age of two. So Jesus could have been now uh, six months, one year, one and a half years. We do not know. But the Bible does, does tell us that on coming to the house, the when the wise men came, Jesus was no more in the manger. Mass. <coughs> Mass. Jesus was no more in the manger. So you better go and see your son's religious. Okay? And goes on to say that they saw the child, not the baby. Jesus was only a child. I want to emphasize this. Sometimes that we, our idea or our belief are more often influenced by what we see and hear. Sometimes when something is uh, said over and over and over again, when we see something over and 
and over and over again. We think that is the truth. So as uh, Christians, uh, we always say, go back to the source. And the source is the Bible. Now if we just uh, rely on what we hear, then we can easily be misled. We just rely on what we see, we can easily be misled. As Christians, we must read the word of God. The Bible must be our final authority. We must spend time reading the word of God. Now this is just an example how our thoughts. Now I'm sure if I asked the same question like yesterday at about in the congregation, they all responded the same thing. They said, where was Jesus when the watchman came? In the manger. How many of them? Three. So the wise, so the wise men they came. So we don't know how many of them. And goes on to say here. Yeah, they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts. So uh, they presented Jesus uh, with gifts. And we know that uh, gold, incense, and uh, money. So every gift has a meaning. But we will not look at the meanings of uh, all the three gifts. But I will look at the gift of gifts. Now let me ask you this question. I think you will ask uh, Charles, uh, he's a professor. We just celebrated Christmas. I'm sorry, you, you, you celebrated Christmas, sir. Just imagine uh, Jesus, sir. Uh, after the Christmas service, uh, they say one thing service here. He went, he went to St. James Church. He broke him away. I think, uh. So, uh, so after service, you are you're back home and uh, you are resting. It's Christmas, sir, after service. Then Jesus appears before you. Jesus appears before you. Okay? And then he asks you, Charles, you celebrated my birthday. Now what gift have you got for me? Him, what gift have you got for me for this Christmas? For this birthday of mine? What would you answer me? Huh? Yeah? I have it is it is, it is the, the story of children. Uh, brother, I always ask children, eh, hey, what did you buy for your parents, eh, their wedding anniversary or birthdays? I gave them a hug after I told them I love you. I always tell them, I tell the parents, next year for your daughter or son's birthday, just give them a hug and say I love you. Play like this. Play. Not just presents from my parents, eh? uh, saying I love you. Anyone can say, man. He says, what? What else? Okay, good. I love you. What else, sir? What else? I'm doing. Yeah? Jesus, uh, so busy, Jesus, sir. Uh, buying gifts for my pastor and uh, buying gifts for my children. I forgot about you, Jesus. In Jesus' birthday, I forgot about you. Right? Yeah? Oh, she attended the service, sir. She attended the service, sir. So, you, you, you can give you a clap, huh? Now, uh, the best gift that we can give Jesus is our worship. Of course, we talk about love and all this stuff in it. Eh? And the best thing that we as children, as creation of God can give him is worship. Now, we know this worship has always been uh, the focal point of the spiritual world. <clears throat> now, God was there. Satan wanted to become like God. So we read in uh, Exodus uh, <coughs> chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20, verses uh, 3 and 4. This is the uh, part of the uh, Ten Commandments. It says the first commandment, You shall have no other gods 
before me. You shall have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. Of course, we may all say, Master, that is not an issue. Eh? And God is part of the year. Eh? We'll come to that later. He goes on to say, You shall not make for yourself an idol the form of anything in heaven, above, or on earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous one. Very powerful then. First says, you shall have no other gods before me. And he says, you shall not bow down and worship any other gods. For I am a jealous God. What about us? Do we uh, give uh, that worship to God and God alone? Or do we have our own uh, idols? Now in the Old Testament, that was the battle. We read the Old Testament. The issue was the people of Israel rebelled against God. Why? The, what, how did they rebel? They worshipped Baal and Ashtoreth. So they kept on uh, rebelling. They kept on uh, worshipping other gods. Not, not that they did not worship Yahweh. They worshipped Yahweh. So Yahweh was part of their worship. Not the focus of their worship, not the. For them, Yahweh was part. Then, God said, He says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not bow down to any other gods. You shall not worship any other gods. But the people of Israel kept on breaking the commandments, worshipping other gods. Of course, today we don't have, we don't have idols in our homes. Probably there are other idols that we have in our homes that are only we know. What about our job? Do we treat job as a blessing from God? Or do we worship our job? Now there are people who literally uh, worship their job. They have got literally no time for anything. Not only for God, even for their own family members. They are ever, ever, ever busy with their job. For them, their life is all about their job. They, they worship their job. Because we call them a workaholics. Eh? Uh, it will be workaholic, but you must be able to manage. But then, when we start worshipping our job, why? Because of the money that brings it brings us. Now today we are living in a different world. In those days, you go to work, come back for a clock, you work uh, uh, five days, five, five and a half days a week. But today things have changed. You go for a uh, nice shift. You have the shift. We work on shifts. Sometimes work for 24 hours. That's entirely different. Then. But then we also know of our individuals, not because they must work, but they choose to work on a Sunday. Because of the extra income, because of the extra pay that they will get. Pastor, I need the money. I need the money, yeah? So not because they are told, hey, no, no, no. You, you, you must work. Now some companies will tell you, hey, the, the, the increase in order, you must work. That is our obligation as Christians, our commitment, an example. But when we choose to our work, when we need not work, then our job and money has become our gods. We may not admit, but we have decided to change our It is always what we love. It's when we love something, we spend our time on that thing. We love our job, we love wealth and money, then that's where we will spend all our time. We love our job, we spend all our time in our working place, doing our job. We love our money, our wealth, we will spend all our money, our time, trying to make more money, to accumulate more wealth. They become our worship focus. So we can do that. 
But of course, sometimes we worship our own self. We worship our own bodies. Now, we know sometimes we spend uh, hours, we spend thousands of dollars uh, trying to make, make sure that we look. Hey, you get old, your hair will drop. Uh, no, no. You get old, the color of the hair will change. Uh, uh, my wife managed to dye my hair once. Could drink COVID, nothing else, no, I said, hey, uh, I'm not saying that you should, you should not dye your hair. But sometimes we, we spend thousands of ringgit, eh? thousands of ringgit just to look good. Just to cover up the wrinkles. Eh? Hey, you get old, definitely get wrinkles, man. No, no. We try to put foundations. Eh? The story of a young lady passed away. She was in her early 30s. She died. So while they were preparing her body for her a soul was taken up to heaven, and God was there. And then uh, God welcomed her, said, welcome my child. Eh? But she said, cannot come, she protested, and God, it's not fair, I am just, I'm, in my early the day, life is just beginning, eh? life is just beginning. Give me some time, God, eh? let me go and enjoy life. Uh, I'm just early 30s, eh? give me some time, but let me go and enjoy life. God saw, looked at her. He told the angel, send her back. So while they were preparing a body, suddenly she came to life. Wow, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Eh? Hey, bring everyone sing hallelujah. And three quarters of the, those who run away, hey. So uh, of course, eventually they realized that she has come back to life. So uh, next day, uh, she said, all these people, they used to put fumes for this criminal center, they have the undertaker done in the cup of the yeah, it must go change and everything. Yeah? So she went to a beautician and uh, uh, got everything her uh, hair done, uh, fitted her hair, made sure all the wrinkles were covered, and uh, eyebrow and everything. Uh. So when she came out, she looked very different. Very different, uh, because she said, I must look good. So she came out. As she was crossing the road, a car dropped her and she died. Somebody died. <laughs> Not fair, or that. God said, You go back. And she said, I want to live more. God said, Okay, then you go back. Lah. You can have a few more years left. Eh? Now she died. Now she went back. Now the soul, the angel took the soul back to her. The soul back to her hell. And she thought before God. And she said, God did not come. Eh? So she said, she protested to God, not fair. You yesterday, only yesterday told me, eh? God yesterday only told me that I can live for another few more years. How come I'm only yesterday and today I can't? Oh, God's good attention. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not recognize you. Eh? <laughs> because she had done so much of a uh, makeup, God, even God would not recognize that story here. Eh? But I'm saying, sometimes you spend so much of money on that. Uh, all this earth things. All we spend, we want to make. Or sometimes we go and spend money in our gym. No, no. Because we all want to have six pack. Six, they call six pack, right? So they ask me how many pack do I have? I say one pack. Right? Yes. So we, we want to uh, we want to co copy the world, right? But all all this are necessary for life. Good health is necessary. We must all look good, necessary. But when, when we are focused, when they become our focus, and we start spending uh, all our time on these things, and we start worshipping them, then it becomes a problem. Instead of worshipping God, hey, how come you do not come to church? Eh? That only that I'm free party, so I don't see my tradition there. Eh? I don't see do a lot of hair. Eh? Hey, how come we see in church? Eh? So they are always busy with things of this world. So they, instead of worshipping God, we start worshipping the things of His God. Now God did long for our worship. Now, and that worship must come from the bottom of our heart. Now if we turn to uh, John chapter 4, verse uh, 23. 
and we reform. Yet the trial is coming and has now come, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worship of the Father says. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. So when I come to church, I must worship God in spirit and in truth. Now it should not be something, uh, some kind of a ritual. I, I, I go to church, uh, I just follow the rituals, then I, I go back home. Now when I come to church, I must come with them. Now the wise men, they took all the journey. They took the journey because they wanted to see Jesus. Can you imagine the challenges that they would have faced? They don't give a name as an excuse. They don't give uh, any excuses. They said, we are going, we are going to see this uh, child, this boy, as the king of Jews. And they were prepared to face all the challenges, all the difficulties, just to go and uh, worship that child. Now, do we have that kind of desire to worship uh, Jesus? Do I say, no, nothing is going to stop me. Nothing is going to stop me. I'm going to Sunday to worship and I'm going to worship. There are two kinds of places I've come, I've come across. Hey, why do you come to church? My uh, friends came, but they uh, so I had no, I was getting ready and my friends came, so I had to uh, uh, entertain my friends. Then I've got another group of uh, Christians. Uh, who is this thing? Hey, my friends. Uh, I was coming in, I bought the big book, in the house for church. They came in, so I told them, you come to the church, then we'll talk, we go for breakfast. For them, hey, church, God is more important than you were. God is more important, worship is more important than we spending time together. I'm going to church, you want to come with me, or you go and wait for me. You can go to the restaurant, have your food, I will drink, then I, when I come back, you'll meet. Now these are examples that we need to set for others to follow. Now if you truly love Christ, if you truly love Jesus, we do truly appreciate what Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary. He said, he seriously appreciate the salvation that we have in Jesus. Then we will want to worship him. We will want to honor him. And want to do that from the bottom of our heart. Now, do we have the kind of desire to worship our Christ? Now, if you come from the heart, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. That's the best thing that we can give to Jesus. Not only for Christmas, Every day. Our focus must always be Jesus. He must be, he must always be number one in our life. We must always be prepared to spend time with him because we love him. And then our worship will accept to before him, accept a sacrifice of a acceptable. So will you make worship your priority number one in your life? As an expression of your love for Jesus. Love us. Let us pray. Most loving and gracious Father, we thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you for his blood. We thank you, Lord, for the wise man who came all the way from the east to see Jesus and uh, the Lord And uh, it's our desire, Father, to also to honor you with our gifts. And uh, we want to worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth. Guide us, inspire us to have you always before us and not to bow down to anything that the world gives us, Father, whether it's our uh, wealth or anything, that we will always be focused on you, that you will be number one in our life, and we will always be focused in worship or worshiping you in spirit and truth. Bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.